What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm really excited because I'm showing you guys a deck that I've really wanted to play for a really long time and this deck gets really really powerful if I even might say tier 0 post photon hypernova but right now the deck I'm talking about is Koshtara and that deck I think is super super fun. I've been having so much fun playing it and I'm finally getting to show it to you guys. Also big shout out to Crush Cards. They kind of gave me the inspiration for this deck build. Now it's not the exact same build that they're playing. However I've been playing this build and I've been having so much fun with it and so big shout out to crush cards because you guys kind of gave me the inspiration to play the deck a little bit more in today's format i've been just holding till next format but i'm gonna keep playing it in today's format now if you guys do enjoy these deck profiles make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll find it right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all that i don't want to take up too much time i appreciate every single one of you with that oh wait we're on the way to 8,000. let's make that happen all right so with that let's get into the deck profile all right so just before we get into the video keep in mind that this deck like i said earlier gets busted post photon hypernova but if you guys wanted to play kashara in today's format i think this is a really cool build again inspired by crush card not the exact same build but very heavily inspired just the fact that i can be able to play this deck and they had some really cool ideas so with that being said let's get right into the deck profile we are starting off with three kashara fenrir fenrir is obviously a very powerful card we all know how powerful this card is but the thing is it searches more than just fenrir in this deck and a lot of other decks people are just playing the fenrirs so you go fenrir search the fenrir in this deck you're not wanting to search the fenrir of course depending on what your hand is looking like but a lot of the time you're going to want to search the next card that i'm be showing you which is koshtara unicorn unicorn has the effect that when it's special summoned it gets to add a koshtara spell card from your deck to your hand and then ogre is the same thing but it gets to add a trap card to your hand so we're maxing out on the koshtara names and that's because you need them to pretty much get through your deck as fast as possible the spells and traps in this deck are very very powerful now the koshtara monsters have some other really cool effects as well ogre when it attacks lets you excavate the top five cards of your opponent's deck and then you get to banish one of the excavated cards and then you put the rest back on top of the deck unicorn when it attacks lets you banish a monster from your opponent's extra deck face down which is absolutely powerful so that's the thing so fenrir we all know what fenrir does because you know it banishes a card on the field it's kind of like a panker tops but the other costura monsters are also very very powerful now the cards that essentially put this deck together are the spells and the traps you have the three costura birth as well as the two costura preparations now costura preparations essentially is a call of the haunted during either player's turn you can special summon one of your costura monsters that is banished or in your hand which is really really powerful birth gives you an access to normal summon a level 7 monster without using a tribute so the thing is with the costura monsters they all have to control no monsters to special summon them so let's say you start off your turn by special summoning a unicorn what do you do with the extra costura monsters in your hand well what you can do now with something like birth is you can just go ahead and normal summon it and then birth also has another really cool effect where essentially if your opponent activates a spell card or an effect and you control a costura monster you get to target three cards in their graveyard and banish it face down this entire deck is just based off of banishing which is really really cool especially in today's format it's kind of like an anti-meta deck preparations has a very similar effect if your opponent activates a trap card you can look at your opponent's hand and banish one of the cards from their hand so this deck is really cool in the sense of you're really banishing a lot of cards that your opponent is either going to control in their hand on their field in their deck in their extra deck which is really really nice the reason we're only playing two preparations is because i think birth is just a little bit more prevalent a little bit more important for today's format whereas preparation banishing from your hand and your opponent has to activate a trap is a little bit less likely but there's still very powerful cards over here then we're playing the extenders and these extenders i'm going to be honest these are the kind of ideas where i got from crush cards and again i want to give them full credit for this we're playing three of the ascended of thunder as well as three astral karibo now ascended of thunder is something that i was thinking of beforehand i never had thought of astral karibo but this card is absolutely insane all you have to do is reveal a number exceeds monsters from your extra deck and the number one you're probably going to be revealing is number 89 and then it gets the special summon itself and becomes the level of the rank of that monster so because this is a rank seven this now becomes a level seven which is absolutely crazy so we want to be playing three astral karibo it's an extender for you same thing with ascended this card you pay 3000 life points you get to special summon it and the really cool thing about this is if your opponent destroys this by battle or card effect you actually get to gain 5000 life points now the odds of that happening are not very likely especially if your opponent knows what this card does but it can come up which is really cool so these are your extenders one last extender that we're playing is the one instant contact and the reason we're playing instant contact is because aqua neos is a level seven flare neos i think is also a level seven and um i think neos knight is a level seven the reason you want to play aqua neos over something like neos knight though is because neos knight is a light monster so it gives your opponent something to use for bestial material so that they can get a body on this side of the field this kind of plays around the whole bestial thing so that's why we're playing aqua i think flare is a fire so you guys can play flare as well but instant contact is another level seven extender for you then we're playing a ton of hand traps we're playing three shifter this is the thing about this deck it's a shifter based deck you can actually play shifter in this which is really really powerful three ash and three imperm now you guys might be wondering 
Why are you playing Ash? In today's format, tier limits, you know, all that kind of stuff, Ash is not the greatest hand trap. The thing is, this deck actually has a really good tier limits matchup. The deck that this deck really struggles against is Fluanderies. And that's why we're playing Ash and Imperm, because these two cards essentially help you against the Fluanderies matchup, which is a deck that you're actually scared of going against the most. The tier limits deck, keep in mind, all of these cards are going to be banishing. Your spells, your traps are going to be banishing. You have Shifter. You have another card, which I'm going to talk about, which is three dimension fissure as well. You have a lot of cards to counteract the tier limits matchup. Don't have a lot of cards to counteract the Flawandries matchup. Now the thing is, with this deck though, I will say outside of these hand traps, is Kostra Unicorn is a wind, so you can actually start off your turn by special summoning Unicorn if they have a barrier statue, and then go into battle phase. But you have to keep in mind, that's also assuming they don't have access to Ryza and all that. So Unicorn on its own is not the best out. However, Ash and Imperm makes it so that you're a little bit more likely to beat the Flawandries matchup. And like I said, we're also playing three-dimensional Fissure. Three-dimensional Fissure, of course, is really good into the format in general. Pretty much anything except the Flawandries matchup, this is really good into, so you'll want to be playing these three sacred swords now sacred swords is something that i was thinking of playing over something like pot of prosperity pot of prosperity is also another really cool card that you could potentially play but the reason i wanted to go sacred sword over something like prosperity is because birth and preparation both summon kashra monsters from your banish zone so banishing them with something like a sacred sword is never a bad thing drawing two cards is also really powerful prosperity is going to dig you deeper but it's only going to get you one card and then on top of that i really do like having access to everything in the extra deck so that's why i decided to play the sacred sword but again you guys can play prosperity as well we're also playing three tt TTT. TTT is pretty much good into any matchup right now. Tier limits plays a lot on your turn, so it's really good into the tier limit matchup, but it's also really good against the Fluandries matchup as well. So I like the three TTT. And then this deck was literally at 39 cards for the longest time. So I was like, what could be the 40th card? I was between Harpy's Feather Duster and Called by the Grave. You guys can pick either one. I decided to go with Harpy's Feather Duster just because getting rid of back row is always a good thing, especially if you're forced to go second. Getting rid of your opponent's Perlerino, their Sulik against the tier limit matchup, their map against the Fluandries matchup is just really, really powerful. Called by the grave yes is good into the tier limit matchup but it's kind of one of those things where if people aren't playing hand traps you're not getting that value out of it you're only getting the value of you setting it and then having to use it as a dd crow kind of thing right so that's the thing with the call by the grave i thought it's a good card however again this deck does struggle with flounderies the most i thought harpy's feather duster was just a little bit better for that reason now again keep in mind in the side deck you guys can build the side deck so that it can combat against more specific matchups but the main deck here i wanted to be able to go first or go second against a lot of different decks and still be able to compete so that's why we're playing the hand traps that's why we're playing the harpy's feather duster so 40 cards in the main deck i think this main deck is amazing i've been loving this main deck over here moving on to the extra deck we are playing the one aqua neos aqua neos of course like i said is an extender with instant contact which is really cool we're playing the one bls this card doesn't come up too often but it has the effect where if you use it with a level seven or higher monster you get all the bonuses so that's really cool because a lot of your monsters or all of your monsters are going to be level seven so that's really nice then we have the nightmare phoenix over here which is really really powerful the gravity control also as well is really nice putting it in the extra monster zone something i just thought of right now was also that you can technically play baron i'm not playing baron in here but you can play baron because uh your ash is a level three and then your koshturas are all level seven so if you special summon a koshtura normal summon ash you can technically make baron the floor you don't really ever are gonna do that but technically you can but yeah anyways that's something i just thought of so i wanted to let you guys know then we're playing the odd eyes absolute dragon into the odd eyes rebellion into the odd eyes rebellion dragon overload this is just an otk package for you which is really really nice we're playing the red eyes flare metal this card is very powerful into time you all know how time is a, is a real thing in this game so this card is really powerful into that we got the number 11 big guy this card is also really cool it can help you push for game it helps you break your opponent's board sometimes and then just push for a little bit more damage obviously big guy we know can't attack the turn it's activated however if you attack with something else you can make a zeus on top of the big guy which is really cool I got ahead of myself, but I wanted to show you guys that option as well. We're playing the number 76. This card is actually insanely powerful. So the thing is with this card, it's a quick effect. Target a monster in your opponent's graveyard. You can detach a material on this card, and then you use that card you targeted as a material for this card. So it's kind of like a DD Crow effect for you, which is also really nice into certain matchups, specifically tier elements. And then we're playing two of the Shangri-La, as well as two of the number 89 Diabolos, the Mind Hacker. These cards are also very powerful. A lot of your combos you're going to try to end on a Shangri-La. If you guys don't know what this card does, is during each standby phase, you can actually special summon a Koshtar monster from your deck, which is insanely powerful because essentially if you make this, you're getting a Fenrir on your opponent's turn, which is really, really nice. But the other effect is if a card your opponent controls is banished face down, which all of your Koshtar monsters pretty much do for you, you get to choose the unused main monster zone and then block it off, which is also really nice here. Diabolos is kind of like one of those things that banishes cards from your opponent's extra deck, which is really nice. It also turns on the Shangri-La because it banishes in face down. So that's really powerful as well. And then lastly, we're playing the one Zeus. So that's it for the deck. I think this deck is super, super powerful. Again, it's going to get like broken tier zero meta post photon hypernova but in today's format i truly believe you can actually still play this deck and be competitively successful with it again big shout out to crush cards for you know inspiring me to build this because i think this deck is really cool i've been wanting to play it i've been getting ready to play it post hypernova 
but I think it's really powerful right now. And I don't think Psy Beast is actually as great. I want to say this. I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, why aren't you playing Psy Beast? It's an extender for you. It's a normal summon. You banish a card. You know, that's all really cool and all. Don't get me wrong. But I really like these extenders here as well because it's one of those things where you don't have to use your normal summon. Sometimes you're going to be using your birth for your normal summon anyways. Birth doesn't give you an extra normal summon. Keep that in mind. It just lets you normal summon for free. So the thing is when you're using something like birth to normal summon, then your Psy Beasts become extra normal summons that aren't great for you. Whereas these cards are always going to be able to special summon themselves so that's kind of the reason why i'm not playing side beast just a like little heads up there if you guys were wondering but again big shout out to crush card you guys inspired me to play this deck and i think this deck is super cool i'm excited to be playing this in today's format so that is it for today's video a big shout out to crush cards again for inspiring me to play this deck in today's format i know this deck is going to get insane after photon hypernova but even in today's format i think this deck is really really fun to play and i encourage you guys to try it out for yourself it's a super fun deck yes it can be a little bit more on the expensive side but it is a very fun deck to play now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff find it right here on the channel so thank you guys all for watching i really do appreciate every single one of you we're on the road to 8,000. i know we can make it happen before the new year i appreciate you guys thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart and with that thank you peace